So there's nothing better than the start of a new football season. Your team is in great shape. You're looking forward to the new season on the basis that this is going to be a great season. After years of disappointment, this is the one. Only to have your hopes crushed within 90 minutes. But seriously, the start of a new football season does bring new opportunities, especially when there are changes. This football season, we have some big changes afoot and they're going to significantly impact where you can find some opportunities, whether you're betting or trading. So what do you remember about the last World Cup? Because I remember it for one specific reason, and that reason was a change in the rules that dramatically changed the way that you would bet or trade on those matches. It completely changed what I did on the World Cup, and that change is coming to domestic football. So it will radically change everything that you do on football. I'll never forget watching that England match and having the same level of astonishment as everybody else when they actually ended up adding on 29 minutes of extra time. It was absolutely crazy. Everybody sort of, their jaws dropped when that board went up because they just couldn't believe how much added time was on. And it was because the official had been given a brief to basically stop teams from time wasting, that they were just gonna add on all of that wasted time to the end of each half. And that change is coming to domestic football. So something interesting about football is that a lot of the time it's not very interesting. And that is because the ball is only in play for a small percentage of time that the match is underway. Teams tend to use things like free kicks, goal kicks, um, substitutions, anything at all really to run down the clock. And that's always very apparent because there are few goals within a football match. And basically every moment that is taken to waste time inches the team closer towards that particular result. There is actually a Betfair trading strategy around this called Time Decay. I've done a couple of videos on that. I shall link you to those videos. So the concept behind trading time is quite simple to understand. If we've got 10 minutes left in an event and then that decreases to five minutes, you can buy time effectively at 10 minutes and sell it at five and net the profit between the two. Because when the clock is ticking and there's no activity on the pitch, then you can take advantage of that as the outcome becomes more certain. But the interesting thing um, is that when you look at a football match, typically over a large number of years, the amount of time that the ball is in play has only been about 55 minutes. And this new rule is designed to have the ball in play more frequently to make the match a little bit more interesting and exciting. But from a betting and trading perspective, the interesting thing is it's going to radically change what you attempt to do, whether you're doing either of those things. So I've got a question for you, and it is not a trick question. Do you think you would score more goals in 90 minutes than you can in 45? If you had double the amount of time, do you think you would end up scoring more goals? And of course, the answer has to be yes. And we have definitive evidence of this because there are very few football matches that score more goals in 45 than they do in 90. Um, and, you know, that may sound a bit silly, but fundamentally what I'm trying to get at here is the longer a match goes on, the more goals you're going to get in a match. If we had a match that was 180 minutes long, you're going to score more goals uh, than you would do in 90. And the key fundamental thing about this rule change is it's going to add more time on to a match and therefore typically you would expect to see more goals that will radically change your approach to the way that you bet or trade on there. But the question is, is how much extra time are they going to add on um, and how many extra goals is that going to uh, create within the match itself? Because that will be impossible to answer because it hasn't happened yet. But of course, we have a great example because we can look at the last World Cup and previous World Cups and look at what happened when more time was added on in the last World Cup. So the great thing about the World Cup is it provided us data in terms of what impact this is likely to have, which we would think would translate to the domestic football season. But in the 2018 World Cup, the average length of a match was 96 minutes. And when we look at the World Cup in 2022, it was 101 minutes. Uh, so you can see there the matches were about 5% longer. So whatever goals you're forecasting, whatever strategy you're doing, you'd basically have to sort of re-rate it as though the match was about 5% longer. Um, and when we look at uh, the length of a match and the impact that it has on things, imagine that we're heading towards the end of the match or the end of the first half or the second half. And then the referee puts up its, his board or the officials put up their board, not the referee. 
then what you will find is that the odds will have to adjust according to how much extra time there is. So if the under goals are here, um, or the chance of a draw is, is sort of, you know, heading in one particular direction, all of a sudden the amount of time available for another goal expands, and therefore the market will react. So there will be a trading opportunity around there. But typically speaking, the average length of a match at the World Cup with this rule in place was about 5% bigger than a traditional match. Now, the biggest discrepancy, although I must admit to having put an arbitrary number on this, uh, that I have seen between the two World Cups was the amount of matches that played out for over 100 minutes. If we look at the 2018 World Cup, the number of matches in total, in, in other words, the first half and second half plus added time that exceeded 100 minutes was about one and a half percent. It was very, very small percentage of matches. But when we look at the World Cup in 2022, that number due to the added time rose to 45 percent. So whichever way you look at things, um, there are going to be longer matches. And that's where most of the key opportunities will be presented. Now, there's always been this weird anomaly with the way that referees add on at its time, because at the end of the first half, they'll like chuck on a minute and then at full time, they'll chuck on three or four or maybe even five minutes. So there's always been this disparity between the amount of added time in the first half and in the second, despite the fact that they're both 45 minutes. It's a weird, it's, it's like a psychological bias that the officials have previously had. So when I looked at the data from the two World Cups, the interesting thing was that when we looked at the 2018 World Cup, the number of second half minutes of extra time that were added on that were higher than the first half was about 98 and a half percent. So basically, 98 and a half percent of the time, this, the second half added time will be much more than the first half. But with this new rule introduced, that dropped to 81 percent. So the two began to sort of balance each other out. So that implies that there are probably two opportunities with this. You're going to have slightly longer first half and in proportion to the second half, it's going to be a little bit more level than it previously was. So there will be key opportunities around the added time on both periods of play. So if you're actively betting on a football match during the domestic season, this expansion of time should lead to there being more goals overall. But the interesting thing is when I actually looked at the two World Cups um, and the difference in time between the two, often that didn't translate directly into a larger number of goals, which I will explain in a minute. But when we actually look at how we would take advantage of this from a trading perspective, there will be lots of opportunities. Because as we come towards the end of the first half and that little bit of extra added time, there will be opportunities in and around there to either lay over or unders, depending upon what the prevailing score is, um, and also to lay the current score with the anticipation that there could potentially be some more goals. And you can repeat that same process as we get towards the end of the match. The market prices a football match with a set of odds based upon the prevailing score and also the amount of time left. So if you adjust that amount of time left, then the odds will have to adjust automatically to that. And I think it will take a little bit of time uh, for the markets to begin to adjust to that. It won't be discounted into the price until all of this begins to settle down. There's going to be a little bit of uncertainty, but where there's change and uncertainty, there is always opportunity. And this is why I'm producing this particular video. Now, if we look at the number of goals in the Premier League last year, it was 2.86. If we look at the championship, the average number of goals was 2.47. So effectively, you're going to be adding on sort of, you know, maybe 10 percent to those number of goals based upon the amount of time that gets added on in those matches on average. So we're not talking about another goal being absolutely certain. We're just saying that the chance of a goal has increased by a chunk. And therefore, while it's not guaranteed that a goal will occur during that particular period, uh, it's definitely skewed in that direction. So any betting or trading strategy that you should have should be skewed in that direction also. And I anticipate that over the course of the season, this will begin to play out more and more. I will be gathering data on all of these matches as I normally do. So I'll be able to build a picture fairly quickly in terms of, of exactly what is happening and how that is influencing the outcome of those individual matches. If, for example, you decided to lay the draw um, at half time or at full time and there's a large amount of added time, you'll see that price begin to bump up um, as the chance of another goal becomes more certain. But what I'm saying here really is that it's going to have subtle effects within the market 
They're not going to be immediately noticeable, but over the longer term and over many matches, they will definitely play out. So because I've got this great data from the 2022 and the 2018 World Cup, I thought, well, I should be able to see if any of what I'm talking about here actually made its way uh, and was demonstrated at the 2022 World Cup. And the interesting thing was at first glance, I couldn't see a difference <laughs> or it's very vague. It was difficult to immediately identify. There didn't seem to be any benefits to the added time in terms of either the time of the last goal um, or the number of goals that were scored. And I think that's what a lot of people may tell you, but I wasn't happy with looking at the broad base. I never am. Um, so I actually dug down underneath and had a good look at each of the individual matches to understand uh, what influenced that. And what I actually figured out was where there was a strong incentive to score and the matches were quite close, that's when this effect had the most impact. However, in matches that it, it, um, exhibited the opposite characteristic in that they're uncompetitive and there was no incentive to score, basically it just dragged the match out for a little bit longer and you didn't necessarily see that impact. So what I would say to you in conclusion is we are definitely going to see an impact of this over the course of the domestic season. In aggregate, you may find that a lot of it gets lost in the mix of competitive, uncompetitive matches and all of that individual detail. But on an, on an individual match basis, I think what you'll find is that the amount of extra time that gets added on will be significant. So I'm going to be looking for strategies that benefit from a later goal, that benefit from more goals. Um, and I will be looking at matches where that's going to have the largest amount of impact. And I think that that is where you're going to find all of the opportunities, whether you're betting or trading this season.